do how to make this kids growth ruler and I'm pretty excited about it. I've had this kind of vision in my head for quite a while and it took me a long time to figure out how to do it exactly like this and I'm excited that it worked out. So the one that I did has the arrow print on it but I also have some templates for a diagonal line, um, big straight chunk lines, uh, polka dots, and then flowers. So you can pick which one you want to do for yours and then they have different fonts for the numbers. As you look at it, you can see that everything is brown on it and it's kind of close to the same color. So it doesn't, nothing stands out a ton. I did that on purpose. When I was looking for tutorials and ideas, a lot of the growth rulers that I saw, there wasn't really a lot of space to put the actual markings and their name and the date and all of that on there or you wouldn't have really seen it that well. I also wanted to do it that way because then you have the option of using just one for your whole family because you can use from this edge to this edge to do your markings. But this way, you can either choose to have one for each child, or you can do the whole family on one, and you've got all that space all the way across to be able to do your markings. That's the reason that I did it this way. You also have the option of not doing any of these shapes. You could just stain it all one color underneath and then do the numbers a different color. With the markings, you could do them white with like a Sharpie paint marker if you wanted to make those stand out more. Or you could do the numbers white if you want to on top of it. But this is how I felt like it would work best for what I wanted. You have options to do it a little bit differently if you want. A piece of wood that is six feet by six inches Peel and stick clear laminate, a template that has the shape or the design and the numbers as well. Glue stick, scotch tape, plastic scraper, scissors, a paper cutter, fine sandpaper, a measuring tape, and a ruler, and a brown sharpie, drop cloth, paper towels, two different colors of gel stain. You'll need a lighter color and a darker color. A rag, this is just a cut up shirt. Polycrylic or polyurethane, some kind of protective finish. And a paintbrush. Step one is to make your template for painting. So I have the shapes, so there's different shapes, but I'm gonna do the arrow. And then there's numbers. I forgot to print out my numbers backwards, so I'm just gonna have to flip it over. Now we're gonna cut out the shapes that are gonna give a um, little design on the back. And you don't have to do that. You can just stain it all one color and then put the numbers on, that's totally fine. But I kinda of thought it would be fun to have a design on it. You're gonna cut the shapes out and I'm gonna use a paper cutter because I don't cut very straight. For the arrow, doing the arrows or the chevron you'll need 12 shapes for the rectangle which will look like really thick stripes you'll need seven and for the diagonal line which will be diagonal stripes you'll need six to fill the whole board and really you can do it differently my idea was to have them um, kind of like this even, even stripes. But if you want to make like this one thick, this one skinny, this one thick, this one skinny, this one thick, then you'll just need some more. For the circles, um, it's not as critical, but I kind of thought that about six of each set, so there's a bigger one, a medium and a smaller one it would kind of fill the board enough. I'm gonna roll out my laminate. I think I'm just gonna maybe put one piece of tape underneath. So I just do the devil over thing and just tape it on there. Just so it kind of stays still, but I still need to hold it a little bit. Okay, and then I'm just gonna take a pencil 
and trace around. So I have my shape and I trace around it. Okay. Then I'm going to take it off with my tape and I'm going to put it right underneath it because they're the same angle and everything. So I can just use that one line, that one cut for both of them. So you can see I just lined that one up with the top of that, or the top of this one to the bottom of that one, and then I traced it again. And then I'm just going to keep doing that. I can see I traced them all and I lined it up on this side too. Less cutting is wonderful. So I can just cut one straight line right here. They're not exactly perfect and everything, but the sides are going to wrap around the back of the board anyway. So if they're exact, they're not, they don't have to be exactly the same. Then I'm going to cut down the lines and I have my separate pieces and I'm just going to cut out each one. Now I have my little arrows all cut out. You can stick the circle, the actual circle, onto the laminate, trace it, and then on the laminate, so pretend this is like the laminate with the backing. This is how you want your laminate and backing to look. So you can leave more space around the circles and the flowers are gonna be the same. The only thing that's different about this flower is that it has a circle kind of it has a circle kind of in the middle, so just keep a hold of that circle. This is going to be the thick stripes, it's just a big rectangle, and this is going to be for the diagonal lines. You'll just cut those out the same way that I did the arrow. Step two is you're going to sand your wood. Sand the edges where we had to saw it. Um, Make sure it's nice and smooth along the edges. I noticed that it's kind of fuzzy. It seems like one side's more fuzzy than the other. So you do need to sand that edge. And I'm doing it softly because I don't want to get, I don't want to scratch the wood. The wood will be stained. So when you're done sanding it all down, I just take a damp paper towel and wipe all that off. Make sure you get it off of the sides also. So I let it dry and now I've got my templates and I'm going to start on the one end. I made the template so that they would wrap around all the way because you're going to paint the sides too and then that will be part of it. So I am going to measure because I want it to be straight. I don't have to but the board is six inches wide, so I want my point to be right at three inches. This point is gonna be just right at the bottom because I want to have enough space for all of them. Then I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna take off a little bit of the backing right at the corner. So that's just gonna help me get it in the right place. You want you want to touch the back the laminate as little as possible so that it will stick better so so it's just like this there's just a little corner okay then i'm gonna put the corner right at the three and then i just push right the corner down then i'm gonna take my ruler and I put the edge of the ruler right on the edge of the wood so I know that it's straight. So I want both edges to hit the side at the same point. So I put the edge of the ruler here and then I slide it and I can adjust it because it's only stuck in one little spot to make sure that both of my edges are touching the same spot. Okay, so now I put this in the right spot. So I'm gonna push down on the spot that is un, that doesn't have the backing, so I can get it on there good. Okay, now I go to the back and grab just that little point that is up, okay? I'm gonna start to pull that, and the ruler is actually gonna follow to push it down, but I don't want the ruler pushing right up against where I'm pulling it off, so there should be a little bit of space in between where the backing is coming off and where the ruler is. 
So I'm gonna leave myself a little bit of space, and I can't really see it. And I'm just pushing along, and that's helping the backing go on evenly all the way down. I take the backing off, and there it is. Okay. Then I need to pick this up a little bit. And to do the edges, I take my ruler and I'm gonna slide it along the, the top. And then I want it all even. I push it against the side and then I push it against the back. It kind of brings it over the edge all at the same time so I don't get any off any. And then the other side's gonna be easier so I can put that side down. So I bring it up. Come over the edge and over the edge again. Okay. Now you take your plastic scraper and you're going to start on the plastic and you're pushing off. And like I said, it doesn't really matter if the, in, the middle part is on really good, just the edges. So I'm just, I'm trying not to scratch your wood, it's kind of soft. And then I do the sides. The back doesn't matter because I'm not staining the back. That's how you do the first one. On the other one, here's how you're gonna do it. So you're looking at, this is where my last arrow is. And I'm gonna take the backing of the last arrow that I put on. And this, all this is gonna do is give me the width in between the last one and the next one. That's all I'm gonna use that for as a guide because I don't want to get it off. I like to keep measuring as I go along because then if one gets off, then it gets more off and more off and more off. You know how those things go. So, I'm just putting, so this is the top of this one, and I'm just going to put the bottom of the backing right along that, just to give me the width. But I'm still going to measure where I want the point of the next one to be. So I want the point to be right at three inches. I want them all on. Now, however you do it, you'll probably have one hanging off the edge. So just make sure that you fold it over on the edges that you want to cover up and then just cut off kind of the excess that you have there. For the circles and the flowers, you could do it however you want. You can put them off the edge, you can put them in the middle, however you want to put them. Take your six sets and then set them all out how you want them, look at it and decide how you want it to be on your board. When you're going to put the laminate onto it, do it kind of like I did the arrow. And then you're going to take a corner, so we're pretending, we're pretending this is our laminate. You're taking a corner and pulling it off and then you'll kind of start right there and push it down. So you get your, your ruler and then you're going to again push it as you pull off the backing, push the laminate down like this. Pull off the backing, push the laminate down, pull off the backing and you're pushing it down as you're going. For the diagonal lines, it doesn't matter what your angle is exactly. You can make it however sharp you want. You just have to make sure that the edges will wrap around to at least cover the edge. It doesn't matter how it wraps, it wraps around on the back. So when we go to apply it, after we've kind of figured out the angle and how we want it, just like I did on my other one, you can start in a corner, pull it up, you could probably do it straight across, so kind of take off this edge and then you're taking off the backing while you're pushing the laminate down with your ruler, like this as you're going along. So it stays on under your edge. The straight line will be the same. Obviously you want it to be straight, so you'll just take your ruler, line the edge of the ruler up on the side, make sure your ruler is straight and then you can just set your laminate right against the side of the ruler to make sure that it's straight. Now we are going to stain the wood. So I kind of just put some stuff underneath the paint tart so it's lifted off so I can do the sides without having to lift it up. 
and I am using this gel stain. So this is hickory. So you're gonna get a little bit of stain on here, and you're gonna start in the middle, and that's where you kind of want your globs, and then you're gonna start off on your laminate and come off of the laminate, and then come from the other side of the laminate and come off. So you don't want globs over by the laminate because then it's more likely to run. And it's better to kind of start in the middle and come both ways kind of at the same time going back and forth than to do one side and then the other just so that it's, um, so you don't have a line of where you kind of were going back and forth. And you can kind of rub it in. This wood, I've noticed, is soaks up the stain quite a bit. And mm -hmm. so I've kind of started to rub it in a little bit. And there's some deeper grooves. You just don't want to go like this way onto the laminate because that's going to kind of shove that under the laminate. It's going to leak. See spots that oh, look like they're filled for now before it starts to dry. So I'm gonna let that kind of set and dry a little bit while I go on to the next one and then I'll come back and wipe it off. Okay, now I'm gonna take my paper towel and I'm gonna wipe. Again, I don't want to wipe towards the edge of the laminate. I'm going to wipe. So I start on the laminate and wipe off the edge of the laminate. And just go kind of to the middle and then go on the other side into the middle. Now the middle is kind of tricky because you don't want to just like shove all of the stain into the middle and have it all right there. So it's kind of the and you can wipe as much or as little off as you want to. You don't want to make, you don't want to leave it too thick because then, for one, you won't be able to see the grain. It will just be like you painted it. And the other is it will take forever to dry. I really only let it sit for probably 10 minutes between when I finished the very last one to when I started taking off the laminate. I'm gonna pull off all of the laminate and it works a little better if you kind of try to do one side and then the other because it kind of pulls some of the wood out a little bit. I'm going to do all of that bottom part and then I'm going to do the top part and then it seems to pull the wood off the edges a little bit less. For staining the circles and the flowers, you're going to do the same way we did it for the arrow. So kind of dab most of it, kind of in the middle, and then start on the laminate and brush in. It's a little tricky with the flowers and the, and the circles because um, you want to go with the grain, but kind of right here, you're going to have to go in a little bit so that you're not going onto the edge of the laminate. And just even it out making sure that you're not going off the edge over here. You're gonna have some weird dark markings over here. The difference with the flowers, it has a little dot in the middle. So I'm just gonna pretend that this is my flower and this is my dot. So I need to apply this laminate on into the center of it so this part will stay the lighter color and then the flower around it will be the darker color. Staining the straight stripes and the diagonal stripes will be just the same as it was with the arrow. I was trying to be so careful pulling it off, but look at that. Some places it just pulls the wood out. So I am just going to grab a teensy bit of stain and just kind of fill that in.
This is the second color. This is a gel stained cherry wood. So the way that I have the rag, I'm just taking my first two fingers, putting it under and then kind of wrapping it around. And then you just kind of hold it with your other fingers. It's sort of awkward, but then you kind of have control. And you're not having the rag hanging all over the place. So I'm gonna uh, just dab it in and get some. I'm gonna do the edge first. So I'm just pushing it along the edge. We're only gonna do one coat, one for drying time purposes, and two because I wanna be able to see the wood grain. So I don't wanna put too much on. So, but you can do more if you want to. Just takes a long time to dry. Okay, so before that dries, I'm gonna do the top. So I've been kind of putting it down first in the white part and then wiping it. I don't want big globs on the part that I already stained because that's gonna make it pull it up even more. So like I said, I didn't wait for the bottom. So I'm doing it in the middle and then I'm going back over it after I don't have so much of the stain on my rag. But you are going over the darker part again. You're not trying to only do the part that's not stained. You're doing both. You're doing all of it this time. So then it just really blends it together. I'm sort of loving this. So I start in the middle and I go back over it. And it doesn't have to be super even, you're gonna wipe it off. So you're just making sure that you get stain everywhere. You can kind of rub it in if there's spots that it looks like it's not going in. That was a big block. So I'm doing this in thirds, so I stained a third of it and then went back and wiped it off and I'm staining the next third. I think that's about how long you want to wait to wipe it off and then you're just going to wipe the sides down. I'm not wiping it too hard, uh, so here I'm wiping and it is gonna pull off some of that darker, but I love how it looks. If you don't want that, if you want it to, the under, the darker to stay solid, then you can wait a longer for it to dry. It might pull it off a little bit still. The more dry it is, the less it's gonna pull off. And here it is with both of the stains. For the numbers, you're gonna they need, you need to make sure that they're going backwards. Um, I printed mine out the right way instead of backwards, so I just need to flip them over because I can see it well enough on the back. Take the glue stick and glue the whole back because I want it to stay on um, the backing of the laminate while I'm cutting. I'm just putting the whole piece of paper on there because you're actually going to be cutting out the number and using the outside of it, the, like the frame around the number as your stencil. So I need some space around the numbers. So we're just gonna glue all of those on. What we first wanna do is just kind of go right in between the two numbers and just cut a straight line. You're just dividing your numbers out from each other. So now you have your six and it's got some space around it that you're gonna actually use that for the stencil. 
and you're just gonna do that for every single number. I have all of my numbers all cut out separately, and now I'm gonna take the number and I need to cut out the inside of the number. So to do that, usually I just kind of fold it gently um, and then just cut, make a little cut right in the center just so that I can kind of get in there. And then you just cut around. So I'm just making a cut going up to the corners. I kind of have it open for me to be able to cut around easier. So I just kind of open it up. Okay, and then I'm just gonna go through and cut around. Be careful. Try not to like cut past the line because then you'll kind of have a line and then the stain um, is more likely to kind of go in that little crack that you made. So, so you're just gonna cut all the way around your number. So then I have my number, that's the right way, and it's all cut out, so I'm gonna do that with every single number. The number four obviously has the little triangle in the middle, so you need to save that. You need to cut that out just like it is and then you're just gonna save it separately and then when we put it on the wood, you'll stick that triangle in the center. You just kinda need to keep track of that so don't lose it. So I'm cutting out this triangle, just being careful not to ruin it. Sometimes when we get cutting, we get crazy. So I'm gonna just save that little guy. And then keep cutting out my four. What I did so I wouldn't lose them is I just taped, so this is the one for the six and the one for the four, I just taped them on the back of the six so that I wouldn't lose them. This is what it was up on top of when I did the main staining, but I took it off to do the others because it kind of moved around a, a little bit. So it's just flat on the table. Now we are going to make the markings. I am using a brown Sharpie just a normal Sharpie. But because, like I said before, I just wanted all of the other stuff to kind of blend, so I didn't want my lines to stand out too much. Just wanted to kind of blend in a little bit, but still be able to see it. But if you want your lines to stand out more, then you could use, this is what I got to make my markings for their height, because I want that to stand out. So that's gonna be white on mine. If you want your markings for all of your inches to stand out, then you could use this for that. It is a Sharpie paint pen, and they have different colors. I have a guide. I kind of tried different ways of doing the markings, and I like this way the best. So I have a guide that tells me at inch one, I'm gonna draw a line that's a half an inch long. These are not the right lengths, by the way. At inch two, I'm gonna go out three-fourths of an inch, and all the way up. So my 12 inch, right at my foot, is gonna be two inches long. And you can do it different if you want to, whatever you wanna do. So just remember that the very bottom is actually at inch six of the first foot. So when you hang it, you're gonna hang it six inches off of the floor. Because you have your baseboard and then you have a little, you can leave a little space. So you're gonna start at six inches. So this first foot, is only six inches. Here's my one foot mark, and I've only got the six inches right here. I hooked the tape measure right here, and then I am just laid it out, and I'm just leaving this right here, and I'm sliding my board down, so I'm always looking at just numbers one through 12. So I line that up, my line from my foot with the edge of the table, take my ruler and I'm gonna get my guide right here. So my guide says on one inch, I go out a half of an inch. So I'm at one inch and I'm gonna line it up, but I'm gonna put the edge of the ruler, the top edge of the ruler a little bit below the inch mark, just because my marker is 
past it. So I have, you know, the edge of the ruler is not where you start measuring. So you start measuring those little lines. So if I line up my millimeter line and my inch line here, then I know that my line is gonna be straight and I'm doing it a little bit below the inch mark. And then put your marker at the measurement where you, where you want your line to go, just so you don't accidentally keep going. It'll help. So I'm supposed to go out half an inch. So I'm starting at my half inch mark and I'm going in and I just go over it a few times. So I'm just gonna keep going until I get to my foot. And my foot mark, I'm gonna go out to two inches. And go back in and out a little bit. After I get to the foot mark, you'll slide it down and line up your foot mark with the edge of the table and then keep going. So at the end, since this is six feet long, and started at six inches, you're gonna have your six foot lines in here, and then you're gonna have six inches. Our next step is to paint the numbers. I kind of lined mine up. They're not stuck on there or anything, but I am going to put my numbers right along the opposite edge from the numbers. You can put yours wherever you want, but I realize that if I put mine right in the center, then I'm gonna be covering up all my cute arrow points, so I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna put it right along the edge, and you can decide where you wanna put yours. So grab your number, and the laminate should be on top when you're holding it. And then think about which side of your stencil is going to be next to your markings. Okay, so you're going to grab it like that. And then you're going to fold it gently. And so the top of the number and the bottom of the number inside are going to meet together. You're just, right now, you're just finding the center of the number. Okay, then on the side that's going to be closest to the markings, you're gonna crease it. And I'm just creasing like the very edge. I don't wanna crease this edge because then it's not gonna do as well as a stencil. Okay, so then I just line that crease up with my foot mark right here. Like I said, I'm doing mine right on the edge, so I'm putting it right along the edge. So because I'm lining mine up on the edge, I'm starting with the opposite edge. Um, if you're putting yours in the middle, you could just start at the top or right here to line it up. But I'm starting the edge, and I want to make sure that my number goes right to the edge. First, I'm going to take off this, just the paper that was my original stencil. I'm going to start on this side. Alright, so I'm actually just going to tear it so I can just take off this side. You want the laminate to touch your fingers and the board as little as possible because it's going to stick better that way. So I'm just making sure that my edges are going right to the edge. So I'm making sure that my crease mark is lined up with my foot mark. And I'm going to have my second bump go over a little more. And then I just push it down. That part. And then I pick it up and push it down over the edge. And really I'm only pressing down right around where I'm going to be staining. I don't need to press down over here. And that will give it less. that if it does pull up the paint a little, it's not going to pull up as much. It'll just be right around the number. Okay, so now I'm just going to go around, taking the paper off and pressing it down right around the edge. using the 
hickory, the darker stain. This is gonna be a little trickier because you have so many angles and curves and everything. So you're probably not gonna be able to get away with never pushing against the edge like we did, we were so careful about with the other. But I'm just, where my, I want my globs kind of down the middle of it. And then again, I'm gonna start off on the laminate and brush into the center. Same thing from the bottom. Because you still want to mainly go um, with the grain. I will, when I, when I very first do each side, then I'll go off from the laminate onto the center of the wood. But then eventually you're gonna have to kind of go along the edge just to smooth it out and make sure you're going against the grain. But kind of that initial staining will go from the edge of the laminate. And I may have gotten a little too much stain on here. And be really careful that you don't go past the edge of your laminate because then you're going to get marks over here on the wood. So don't go crazy with your swooping. Okay, so now I've got it covered and I'm going to, now I'm going to go with the grain just to make sure it doesn't have like weird Lobs and stuff. So I am sort of trying to not go right against it. I am going down the edge of it. And it is going to bleed a little more than our arrows did. I think mainly because we're on top of the paint. The laminate can't stick quite as well on top of the paint. So it'll bleed a little bit, but I'm going to do something after I take it off that will make it not so obvious. So I realized that it's probably best, like timing wise, to do maybe two at a time. So you stick the lamin on for one and then the next one and then stain the one, stain the next one and then go back and wipe it off, wipe it off and then take off the laminate of both of them and then rub the outsides. So I'm just trying to go away from the edges as much as I can. Make sure it's all even. And you can wipe off as much or as little as you want. Just try to do about the same on each of your numbers. Make sure you're not wiping past the edge of your line. So I haven't put down my edges at all and that will make it easier to pull off. Like... Looks so cute, I love it. So I'm not gonna show you every single number, but I'm gonna show you four because I'm doing it a little bit differently. So I already made my little fold mark. And I'm actually, because the four is a lot wider than the other numbers, I don't want it to stick out that much further than all the other ones. So I'm just gonna kind of cut this off and I'm just gonna go put the edge of it right on the edge. Four is a little bit different too because it has the little shape in the middle. So I'm just grabbing that triangle that needs to go in the center. And then you're just going to kind of have to eyeball where it needs to go. Push it down all the way. You can leave it like this. It's got pretty crisp edges and you can kind of tell, you know when you, when you paint up against tape, there's kind of a line, like kind of like a little bump. Well. I don't really want that on there, and I kind of want it to blend a little more. So to rub the outsides, um, if you're going to do that, I'm kind of starting outside of the number and coming in so that I'm not wiping stain 
off and then moving my spot on my paper towel quite a bit so that I don't rub the stain. So I'm just starting on the outside and coming in and I'm not wiping very much because I don't want, I'm gonna trade spaces because that's getting some stain on it. Now all of my numbers are on. And I just need to let that dry really well before I put the finish on. So it's all dry and we're going to apply this polycrylic on it. You gotta do it pretty thin and I'm planning on doing uh, three coats because I've noticed as I've been staining that it's kind of slivery, like little slivers come up. So I don't want that to happen when kids are gonna be standing against it. So we're gonna start with the edges. It looks a little bit blue when you apply it. You don't want it very thick or else it's not going to dry and it gets kind of bubbly. If you get some on the top, you want to spread it out so it doesn't get like up. I'm just going to brush it against the bottom. In case I have big globs underneath, I want those to be able to dry. So I'm gonna do that one side, and then I'm going to start on that side from the top. It dries fast, and you don't want to brush over it after it's dry. And so I'm gonna do all the way down on this edge. You don't want to have like a line where you stop brushing. Okay, and then start back up at the top. Come down right next to it. So when I almost get to the edge, I'm going to do the edge again, the other edge. I'm just going to kind of go a foot at a time, doing the side and then the top, so that none of it dries before I do the, next, the part next to it. Remember to go along the bottom, making sure you don't have big clumps of finish, and then let that dry. Something that I learned that can help when you're doing more than one coat of something with your paintbrush is that you take the paintbrush and you kind of dab, get kind of the excess paint off a little bit. You can do it with paint or with finish or whatever. And then get a Ziploc bag. You put it in the Ziploc bag and then seal it up and put it in the fridge. And then it doesn't dry out in between while you're waiting for your finish or your paint to dry because if you wash it, then it's gonna take forever for the paintbrush to dry. After that's dry, you're just gonna sand it super lightly with a fine sandpaper just so that the next coat will stick pretty well. And then you'll apply your second coat of poly in the same way that you apply the first coat and you will just keep on applying coats until you feel like it's however you want it. It is now done. I ended up putting on four coats of polyacrylic just because I realized I didn't do the sides very well. They were kind of rough. You could probably get away with three coats though. The way that I like to hang projects like these is with these command damage free hanging strips because I don't want to put holes in my walls and because it makes them lay flat and it's easy to adjust them. You can take them off and 
They just work really nice. Remember, you gotta put exactly six inches from the floor so that it measures correctly. I put command strips on near the top on the sides and then right in the middle on the sides and then near the bottom on the sides. Thank you.